Wegelaar. I'm an endowed professor from Tilburg University and I'm part of the research team that uh, did research from time to connect. I'm Annemieke Schoenmaker. I'm, I'm the program leader of the National Safety 2 program in the Netherlands. So it's a national wide problem. Hi, and I'm Katharina van Oosveen. I am um, a nurse, a nurse researcher on Safety 2, but I'm here today as a board member of the Dutch professional body, which is one of the initiators and the monitors of the Time to Connect program. We had a special uh, session in a hot air balloon to imagine stepping in a hot air balloon and then going through the wind and look at all the factors that propel you forward. Yeah, and I dove some in the literature on safety too. So explaining the difference between safety one, learning from mistakes and learning from failure, until also incorporating some safety two, and that entails that we are learning from Monday practices in hospitals and learning and studying what can be done to enhance patient safety. Yeah, and I told the audience about uh, healthcare professionals' resilient behavior to prevent patients from harm. And um, I came up with a few examples from our research uh, on nurses' resilient behavior. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. That's great. And I really liked hearing some of the very practical examples and problems that you have with nursing over in the Netherlands. So could you explain a little bit about the difference between safety one and two and just a little bit more broadly about what the safety one and two programs are? In the safety one uh, paradigm, we learn a lot from mistakes by looking back and trying to understand what went wrong and why it went wrong and try to solve that by standardizing things. So if we learn what went wrong, we can come up with guidelines or we can come up with clinical pathways or protocols to, to prevent that it's going wrong again. But only looking at things that go wrong, we probably don't learn all of it because normally in Monday practices, daily practices, we also are kind of resilient. So sometimes things don't go, don't go wrong because of the guidelines or due to the guidelines. And uh, what we are trying to do in the Netherlands is also to incorporate that we are a system in which we can trust our healthcare professionals and that we can build on their craftsmanship and that we can enhance patient safety if we learn from best practices, inspirational practices. So we use the positive deviance approach and a social movement we try to make based on intrinsic motivation of our healthcare professionals. Yeah. And of course, we um, are helped by, by the patients themselves. So that's important when you have a multidisciplinary dialogue you need the patients for all the, the special insights about their life and what they uh, find important. I think as a doctor working in the NHS myself, what it reminds me of is uh, the difference between what we have as Datex, date which is when there's an event where some, there's a clinical event where something goes wrong. But we also have something which is a bit more informal called a Gratex, which helps to celebrate when things go right. And I think the idea of using the, the events where things have, have gone well is also really useful because quite often that goes unnoticed and there's a lot to learn. So coming here from the Netherlands to present at this international conference, what would you say are the benefits of being able to connect with people from different countries and learn from different healthcare systems around the world? Just as we learn in the Netherlands from inspirational practices of others and trying to incorporate that in our mundane practices, so transfer all the knowledge, we can also do that on national level by learning from other hospitals and other healthcare facilities all over the world. So we heard the couple of, last couple of days quite a number of good examples. We certainly can think about how we can use that in the Netherlands too. Yeah, and the professionals learned a lot in the learning and improvement networks with other professionals from various hospitals. So it's so important to network and see the successes of each other and uh, translate them to your own context. Yeah, and I think the, 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 um, the good thing 
um, of being here is that all people here are human capital, which are potentially resilient in the basis. So thinking together about patient safety and coming to solutions to prevent patients from harm is very variable these days. Thank you, and that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed about being here is getting to meet people who are working in different countries that you definitely wouldn't get to meet otherwise, I don't think, for various reasons. So finally, uh, one more question from me. You talked a little bit about some of the examples that you've heard. What would be uh, one or two take-home messages now that the conference is nearly over to take back home with you? I put you on the spot slightly. Um, for the professionals themselves, um, work happiness is a very important thing and they want to act themselves and think about solutions themselves. So you can't do it without management but you have to think first and uh, for the managers and the board they have to empower the professionals for that routine and reflection and then you will be surprised. <laughs> I think one of the key messages I'm taking home is the speech of Amy Edmondson and explaining that we should be understand that we can have intelligent failure as long as we learn and try to improve ourselves every day. And also I, th I, I learned a lot about uh, the, the simple question asking the patient what matters to you most. Yeah.